Hi everyone, it's Sandy and today I'm here with a very exciting and special video because I was given the opportunity to do an author interview with Elizabeth Lim. Elizabeth is the author of Spin the Dawn, which is a new own voices YA fantasy set in ancient China. And this book is coming out Tuesday, July 9th. So by the time I post this video, the book should be coming out very, very soon. This video is not sponsored, but I do want to give a shout out to Alexandra from Penguin Random House. She was the one who contacted me with this opportunity and I'm so grateful that I'm able to do this. And obviously I do want to thank the author for being a part of this video. Before I get into the interview, make sure you stay till the end of the video because I will be announcing a giveaway for Spin the Dawn. So without further ado, I'm going to pass the torch to the author who will give a brief synopsis of Spin the Dawn. Hi everyone, my name is Elizabeth Lim and I am the author of Spin the Dawn. Spin the Dawn is a Chinese inspired fantasy about a young tailor who has to disguise herself as a boy so that she can compete in a competition to become the Imperial Tailor. Along the way, she has to sew three dresses of the sun, the moon and the stars. It's kind of like Mulan meets Project Runway. My second question is what inspired the story of Spin the Dawn and what drew you to YA fantasy? Growing up, I was a huge bookworm. I loved reading anything I could get my hands on, but my absolute favorite was fantasy. There wasn't that much of a young adult fantasy section when I was growing up, but I always chose books that had a sort of coming of age element. And I loved that because as a teen, I really identified with it. And so when I first started writing Spin the Dawn, I was really inspired by the books that I used to read. And I wanted to write something that had a fairy tale element because I grew up absorbing all the fairy tales that my dad would tell me and folk tales from all around the world. And so that's sort of how Spin the Dawn was born. It was born out of three different fairy tales that I loved as a kid. Them being Donkey Skin, which is a French tale um, about three dresses of the sun and the moon and the stars. And then there's also East of the Sun or Norwegian fairy tale and a Chinese, the Chinese legend, the cow herd and the weaver. My next question is what is your favorite part about the writing process? My favorite part about the writing process is actually the very beginning and the end. I love having an idea that I'm really excited about and just like brainstorming plot ideas and characters and filling up notebooks and notebooks with them. I do hate the actual drafting of, of a book, um, so that, that comes a little bit after the initial excitement. But after that's done, I do enjoy polishing and revising and making the book as good as it can be and like just a really tight, concise story. I find that really fun. I always love hearing how authors create their worlds. So in world building, how do you begin? World building tends to be one of the first things I think about when I'm writing a book. I usually start off with the characters and I try to envision the world that they're living in and that really helps to get me going. But as a fantasy writer, there also tends to be magic in my books and I think it's really helpful to come up with the magic system early on and to establish the rules and what, what exactly the magic can or can't do because that'll just save you a lot of time later on and it's helpful to write within those constraints. For Spin the Dawn, a lot of the world is actually inspired by ancient China and much of the research that I did was actually from my studies in college. I minored in East Asian studies and I focused a lot on the Silk Road. So that knowledge that I had acquired definitely inspired um, the world of Alandi and the countries around it. And it was really helpful to have a real culture and history to build upon. But of course, that also had its own challenges. For instance, when I was first writing, I was aware that there wasn't really knitting in ancient China, but it's a big part of the plot. So I was like, you know, should I follow history or am I building my own world? And I think it's important as writers to be aware of the worlds that you're basing your own fictional world off, but also to have some liberties and to know that you're writing a fantastical world. So not everything, you don't have to be too nitty gritty when it comes to little facts, like whether there's knitting in ancient China. My next question is what advice do you have for other writers? My advice for other writers is to read as much as you can. If you love writing young adult fantasy, by all means, read all the fantasy that you can, but also read contemporary, read historical fiction, read nonfiction. Everything, in my opinion, helps. My second piece of advice would be to hone your ear. As a musician, I 
I'm constantly listening to everything that I write. I try to read aloud what I write at the end of the day, at the end of every writing session. And I find that it really just helps me improve my dialogue writing. And I try to pay attention also to how my favorite authors write dialogue and how they just construct their sentences. And it helps with the rhythm and the flow. My third piece of advice advice would be to give yourself little goals instead of a timeline. I don't think it's helpful to have the mindset of saying, I want to be published before I'm 25, or I want to finish this book by the end of the year. I think it's more helpful to say to yourself, oh, I want to write 500 words today. I want to write a thousand words today. I want to finish editing chapter 12 today. And then little by little, you'll have a book that you're really proud of. So speaking about characters, how are you similar and different to your main character, Maya? Oh, this is a tough one. I would say that Maya and I are both really persistent and ambitious and we're very passionate when it comes to our craft. Maya with sewing and me with writing and my music. But our differences, I would say that she's a lot, she has a lot more grit. At her age, I was still pretty immature and I really don't think I would have held my own if I had to be in a competition with 11 other master tailors. Also, I'm interested in knowing which character was the most challenging to write about. The most challenging character to write was definitely Emperor Kanijin. Tiny spoiler here, it was hard making him a unlikable character but also mysterious because he has a bunch of secrets about his past that aren't revealed until later. The most fun characters to write though were definitely Lady Sarnai and Eden. So for my eighth question, if you could hang out with one of your characters for a whole day, who would it be and what would you do? If I could hang out with one of my characters for a day, I would pick Maya. For some reason, I think she and I would just get along really well and I would love to see her reaction to a bunch of modern day things like a sewing machine. I would bring her to the garment district in New York City and um, take her to look at sewing machines and see what she thinks of them. My guess is she would be intrigued by how fast they work and their machinery, um, but she would say they're nothing compared to her magic scissors, and I would love to see those in action. After that, uh, given Maya has a sweet tooth and I want to be a good hostess, I would bring her to a bunch of bakeries. There are so many good cookies and cakes and pies that I love here that I would love to just, you know, go for tea somewhere and stuff our faces. <laughs> to top it off, maybe I would take her jet skiing because she loves the water and the skyline here is really beautiful during sunset, so that'd be a fun thing to do. If Spin the Dawn could be adapted into a different format, such as a graphic novel, miniseries, TV show, live action film, animated film, etc., what would you choose and why? Fun question. I grew up watching a ton of Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks, and Miyazaki films, so obviously my answer is going to be an animated film. I would love to see Spin the Dawn animated. And I think for some of the details in the dresses, like the dresses of the Blood of Stars, of the Laughter of the Sun, and the Tears of the Moon, it would just be really cool to see what animation did with them in a way that I don't think would be possible yet with live action films. And my last question is, what message do you hope readers take away from Spin the Dawn? Spin the Dawn is an homage to the classic fantasies and the fairy tales that I grew up reading and loving. And it was really important for me to incorporate my heritage into Spin the Dawn as I was writing it so that there would be a fantasy out there that was something that I would have loved to read as a teen. So I hope that's meaningful to my Asian readers. And to all my readers, I my message that I would love you guys to have is a really simple one. I just want you to enjoy it and to be Enchanted by Maya's tale. So those are all of my questions for the interview. Thank you so much again to Penguin Random House and Elizabeth Lim for reaching out to me and doing this video with me. I really appreciate it. I'm so, so thankful for this opportunity. So now it's time to announce the giveaway. I will be giving one hardcover copy of Spin the Dawn. This is an international giveaway. So as long as Book Depository ships to your country, you are eligible to enter. I will leave a raffle copter link in the description box below. So just use that link to enter the giveaway and you're all set. All the giveaway rules will be in the description box below. So make sure you check that out before you attend to enter the giveaway. Here's Spin the Dawn and it's going to be out on July 9th. Don't forget to check out Spin the Dawn which is coming out on July 9th which is very very soon. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!